Welcome to the Matt Wilkie Podcast. Hello. I just want to discuss something that was brought up the other day, actually. Um, it was actually in relation to the investment in training in the UK uh, and how it's actually adversely affecting the economy in many ways. In many sectors, there's a lot of job vacancies. Engineering, for example, if you're actually qualified and experienced, I would say it'd probably take you a week to find a job. There's literally thousands of jobs out there on a regular basis because there's a skill shortage. Air conditioning, there is a skill shortage. Certainly in London, there's a lot of job vacancies. Um, I know some posts have been open over a year uh, because they simply can't get the people to do it. Now... Part of it is stagnation of rates. Um, a lot of rates haven't gone up since probably 2000, you know, the wages. Which sort of, there's no benefit for people moving one company to another that are quoting old rates. Because um, obviously, if you're time served with a company, there's no real benefit to hopping to another company if the rates are very similar. Now, the other side of this being is, I remember when I did my City and Guilds in Carpentry and Joinery, uh, it was very different from when I did my city and guilds in, um, what do you call it, in electronics. I did electronics 224. Um, but when I did my 224 and my 726, uh, both ele electronics, um, you got the support of actually working for another company. So you didn't just go to college, you also got a placement that you worked full time and then you had day release for college because you develop your experience and skills as you're going. It's not just theory, which is generally what you get from college. Um, you put in the real world situation, so you build up your ability alongside your building up your knowledge base. When I went and did my City and Guilds Carpentry and Joinery, I was already working as a carpenter um, for a company um, I originally did furniture a while back, but I then moved into house building. But the the point was I'd actually learned through the company, then I decided I'd go and get my papers because I get paid more. And I was talking to my lecturer there, and he was explaining how a company, quite a large company in Worcester that's been there over 80 years, used to have 12 apprentices on carpentry, and then they'd have other apprentices on electrics and another set on um, bricklaying. They now have none. They don't invest in any training at all. They, they've changed their whole viewpoint on the world um, because they're now seeing that the market's changed. They've seen the market move from investing in people and they stay with you to the fact that you invest in people and then they start their own company. Um, so as such... They just poach from other companies, you know, we get this where all the agencies start to appear um, because when I was at college, there wasn't that many agencies. Now it's pretty much normal to source people through agencies because it's often quicker and easier than doing your own recruitment process. Now, the problem with this is that, A, you've got another layer introduced that's actually quite expensive. Agencies are quite expensive uh, for sourcing people, but B, the whole poaching exercise does not invest in people. It works for a period of time. The UK education system began declining in probably about the 50s, um, 50s, early 60s, and has continued to do so. The problem we're facing in the UK at the moment in many sectors is there's a lack of people with the knowledge and experience to take up many roles. This is what I was trying to explain to somebody, um, that the average Brit cannot do most of these jobs because they don't have the experience and knowledge. If they went to college and qualified as a, a gas engineer, they would need a company to take them on to work. But you would probably find a lot of companies would be hesitant to take anybody on with zero experience. Because every job I apply for, you have to have a minimum of five years experience before they'll even consider you. And that's pretty normal. Um, that's what I was trying to explain when you're, you're talking about the, the gap in the economic issues with the UK. Now, I know in the US they have this, uh, what's it called, the H1B, uh, which I think Silicon Valley uses it a lot. 
But what's actually happened is companies have sort of embraced this sort of outsourcing everything, which goes hand in hand with this um, poaching instead of investing yourself. And what happens is it actually creates gaps in the economy over time um, or takes jobs from an area. Because if you're not willing to invest locally, somebody will invest somewhere else. For example, I know from my time up at Millennium Point in Birmingham that the uh, university next door to us was, I would say, about 80 90% Chinese. When I say Chinese, they're not British Chinese. They're from China studying in the UK for various qualifications. They're taking the gaps in our own economy and using them. They're seeing the opportunities to study. They're seeing the ability to progress in another nation. They're seeing the ability that if there is gaps and experience gaps there, um, along with degrees and what have you, they'll take it and they'll do it cheaper. Um, this is why I was bringing up the subject in the first place, because my concern with the UK is it's allowing it to happen. It needs to be training engineers. It needs to be changing companies' attitudes towards people to realize that that guy that sits in the boiler house, um, he isn't easy to get rid of and replace because once he's gone, the new guy doesn't know your building. It may sound quite trivial, but some of the buildings um, I've worked on have got 6,000 people working in them. Uh, the reality is they know where everything is in the building. They know what, how everything works. They know where the issues are in the building, the stuff that on a day-to-day -day basis people don't see. In the same way, if you continue to allow gaps to open up in an economy, it eventually affects the economy. Um, and I think that's why you're starting to see shifts like where the Silicon Valley, for example, you're seeing them in other countries uh, because, obviously, if you import people to do the work, eventually they take those skills back to where they come from and they develop a new business. So in, in essence, technology, knowledge, experience, it's no longer an advantage being in your home country where it's expensive to set these things up. It becomes very, very cheap for them to do in another country. The call center industry is a prime example of that. Um, not the cold calling, because I quite, quite simply that has been saturated to death um, to the point it's changed some of the laws. But at the same time, when you call PayPal, when you call your phone provider, your uh, gas company or whatever, a lot of them are outsourced, which proves a point that those jobs are going overseas. And uh, yes, it's cheaper, but B... It's also hitting the technical market now. Thanks for listening.